That was Donald Trump infamously throwing Michael Cohen under the bus on Air Force One. He was also lying. We have the evidence in Trump's own voice that he knew about that payment and made it and reimbursed it. So that was a lie. It's a reminder of how difficult it is even for the most loyal lawyers who go farther than other lawyers are supposed to, that they still find themselves betrayed by Donald Trump. That's relevant, as he needs lawyers right now. His defense lawyers are the only thing standing between him and a conviction in that courtroom. And up until this week, they were the only people attending on his behalf. He had one family member on Tuesday. Now, this morning, his lawyers were back at it because they had to deal with a judge rebuking them, saying, with regard to possible new gag order violations, nobody forced your client, Trump, to talk. And Trump's new defense lawyer says, Judge, I agree with that. The kind of concession that makes you sound reasonable but could upset this notoriously difficult client. The judge also tangled with the same defense lawyer last week, saying, quote, you are losing all credibility with this court. You don't want to lose all your credibility at the beginning of a trial. So that is how far this lawyer went. He pushed so hard in open court against the facts, against the odds, against what good lawyering would be, because he knew Trump wanted to hear that fight. And that still wasn't enough for his client, defendant Trump, who's now been, quote, venting about this lawyer Blanche and griping that he hasn't been following his own instructions and has been insufficiently aggressive. That's the key word. Trump wants that aggression in and out of court, and he knows his way around legal troubles. That is certainly the case. Trump's defense team has also had to deal with damning evidence, including this mountain of receipts and texts. We did a special report on that last night. You've probably heard about some of them. It makes it hard to mount what are called factual defenses, where you say none of this even happened. Now, we want to turn now, as we've been doing throughout the trial, to someone who knows a lot, who's battled Bob Mueller, Caroline Pelosi. He's a criminal defense attorney who represented a figure you may recall, George Papadopoulos, who was an aide to Donald Trump on the 2016 campaign, which is a campaign that's come up so much in this trial. And she represented him in the Mueller probe. Um, great to have you back. Thanks for having me, Ari. Yeah, I wanted to look at this from a defense perspective, not asking you to formally endorse everything, but give us that insight, because Trump's lawyer this week has been pushing hard, and Trump says it's not hard enough. Um, and there are some available defenses. Um, I, I told viewers about this. I'm going to put back up, and this is admittedly simplifying it. But one way to look at it is, uh, and this is drawn from the opening arguments, the lawyer said maybe nothing happened at all, right? So that means, hey, uh, Trump wasn't involved in any of this. Um, if anything happened, Cohen did it. You can call both of those a kind of factual claim. Um, or if anything happened, maybe they do prove elements of this, the things that happened were not against the law. Um, your view of, of the available defenses. Yeah, I, I like door number three the best. And, um, you know, if, if I've said from the beginning of this case, I think this is a highly winnable case for Trump, Ari. And by winnable, I mean, I think this jury could hang. I don't think realistically there's any possibility of an acquittal here with a Manhattan jury. But as you know, it only takes one juror to hang. And I think the reason, Ari, is because, you know, as much as the prosecution is trying to make this a simple case, it's not that simple. The way the DA has chosen to charge this case is, in fact, incredibly complicated, even for lawyers. And so I think it's highly likely that um, the confusion element will get one juror there. As you know, this is at its heart a, a misdemeanor falsification of business records case, which the statute of limitations lapsed on. So the DA couldn't charge it as a misdemeanor. They chose to choose it as a felony count by um, their theory is that the, the felony falsification of business records were done in furtherance of concealing a secondary crime, which is also a misdemeanor under New York state law, which is a criminal conspiracy, excuse me, unlawful conspiracy to violate um, New York state election campaign laws, which the object of that conspiracy is a federal election campaign law. Now, if your head is spinning, that's because it's a really complicated theory. Um, and then there's a lots of issues. And so I'm going to slow you down a little. Yeah. I'm going to slow you down a little. But just on that point, that what we call legal defense, not saying none of this happened, but hey, this isn't really a felony you think is a stronger uh, argument for them. Um, we're going to continue our discussion here. This is one of those nights where we have breaking trial 
uh, news, so I'm going to play something brand new. We might even go into the red breaking banners. I don't know. Uh, but the control room has alerted me. We now got this new evidence. This is something that I know you and I and no one has heard yet because it's only been described. It's a tape that Cohen made earlier in the broadcast. For example, we played tapes that have been out there. Um, this was played in court for the first time. It has Donald Trump's voice on it, and it actually hasn't played yet. So the jury heard it, and because trials are public, even though we don't have the video cameras on there, we do have now the trial evidence. So this is playing on MSNBC here tonight uh, for the first time. And as I'm told, we're all going to be listening to it together, but I believe it's also from a vault of tapes we knew existed when Cohen was then working for Trump. Um, and as described earlier in court today, has to do with them looking back on the deals they made and whether they liked that they made it or not, that kind of discussion, uh, we have no reason to think that Trump knew he was being recorded, uh, which is why it's such interesting evidence. Um, we'll get your view on this. Cohen, excuse me, Cohen and Davidson uh, discussing how they feel about what they did. So it's Cohen uh, and that witness today, Davidson. Uh, we know Cohen made several tapes of Davidson, of Trump and others. So we're going to listen uh, and respond. Let's let's play that. I can't even tell you how many times he said to me, you know, um, I hate the fact that we did it. And my comment to him was, but every person that you've spoken to told you it was the right move. That is Michael Cohen describing Donald Trump looking back at it. I'll say a word about it. And then, Caroline, you could tell us how the defense team might be dealing with this, because it relates to the, the segment we are in and what we've been discussing. Uh, I think the context there, and we knew about this from the trial earlier today, is that if the theory of the defense is, oh, Cohen made up stuff later, um, that is hard to hold on to if you have all this contemporaneous evidence along the way. Um, and you don't have to believe everything he says. You don't have to say he's a perfect guy. But that tape is being offered by the prosecution to show, hey, as it went along, he kept mentioning that Trump was involved, because he was. That's their contention. Um, and when he says, oh, Trump says, oh, I wish I didn't do it, that's not to hurt or help Trump. It's just what he says Trump said. Um, your thoughts? Yeah, again, I'm sticking with um, the, and this is a shade of what Todd Blanche said in his opening argument, which is, spoiler alert, it's not, it's not illegal to try to influence election. Nothing from that tape there indicates, has anybody saying we committed a crime, right? I mean, this is, this is my issue with a lot of the evidence that's been presented thus far, which is that it's seedy. I mean, all the, the, the evidence today, the Keith Davidson stuff, I mean, it's disgusting. The stuff that he did for a living, um, you know, doesn't sit well with people, frankly. But this is where I think Trump might be his own worst enemy as a client. For, and, and Todd Blanche and Susan Necklace certainly have their work cut out for them in that, you know, a common thing that defense attorneys do is, is get up and say to the jury, look, you don't have to like my client. You don't have to like his lifestyle. You don't have to, you know, agree with anything he did. You can hate him, frankly. But, you know, this is the United States of America, and it's not illegal to, um, you know, as we know, it's not it's not illegal to pay hush money. The context, obviously, that the, the prosecution is trying to frame this in is that it is right. illegal in the context of a campaign finance law violation right before the election. So I think there, you know, that theme goes well with with that um, statement there, too. I, that's nothing that I would, um, you know, go crazy about if I'm the defense attorneys tonight. 